Someone left a comment on one of my videos recently and I just had to bring it up here because it's a perfect example of why so many people are struggling to get their mixes sounding big, punchy, exciting, and competitive. I'm gonna read it for you and I want you to be really honest and ask yourself if you see yourself in what this guy said. Because if you can get over the hurdle I'm gonna explain in this video, then you actually have a shot at getting your mixes to sound as good as the pros. All right, so here's the comment. I'm hesitant to boost any frequencies that much in general, if I'm honest. They usually mess with other instruments or evokes in the same area. Also, I think using multiple EQs throughout with smaller boost may give a more natural, rounded sound. With that said, the snare sounds great. Thanks for the thoughts. So this comment was posted on a video where I outlined the frequencies that you can boost that sound really good on most snare drums, and some of those boosts were really big. Now I'm gonna read this comment again, and I'm gonna highlight the red flag words as I go. I'm hesitant to boost any frequencies that much in general, if I'm honest. They usually mess with another instrument or vokes in the same area. Also, I think using multiple EQs throughout with smaller boost may give a more natural rounded sound. With that said, the snare sounds great. So if you haven't spotted it yet, here's the problem. His ears tell him that it sounds great, but his mind tells him that he shouldn't do it for a whole bunch of vague, fuzzy reasons. I see this all the time. Like, so many people out there are just battling with their minds when they're mixing instead of just listening to it. And I don't know if it's, it's YouTube, all the different opinions and competing voices out there. These ideas just get lodged in our mind. Like someone says something on YouTube and maybe they've got a whole lot of views and now all of a sudden it's just in the back of our minds every time we're mixing and we can't shake it. And it gets to the point where you let these ideas and thoughts and fears have more of a say over your mix decisions than your ears, but you can't do that. You cannot do that. You have to mix by your ears and not your fears. That was pretty good. Hey, if you're the person who left this comment, look, I, I don't mean to put you on blast or anything. I'm just trying to help you and help hundreds or thousands of other people who are gonna see this video and are struggling with the exact same problem. But we can easily deconstruct this comment and pull it apart. So first he says, they usually mess with other instruments or vocals. Well, what does usually mean? So it, it often does, but it, it sometimes doesn't. So does that mean you, sh you shouldn't try it? I mean, I'm sorry, I, I often boost 8K on snare, on kick, on vocals, sometimes on a lot of other tracks too, and it sounds fine. And then I think using multiple EQs with smaller boosts might sound more natural or rounded. Well, first of all, why is natural or rounded automatically better? In fact, in rock, you usually don't want a really natural rounded sound. You want something aggressive. And often when I hear these types of words and descriptions of sounds, it's kind of just an excuse for a dull, boring mix. I mean, let's just test this idea out. So here's a vocal where I've got almost 9 dB of a boost at 8K. We all knew these days will come. Now let me try and duplicate that and I'll try to get the same result or see what happens if I only boost a couple dB on a few different EQs. All right, so this purple track up here, Vox Test, is the new one that I'm gonna try, and this other one is the original EQ and vocal sound that I had. Instead of this SSL channel, let's load up something else. Okay, and let's boost at 8K. We all knew these days will come. Let's just do 3 dB on that one, but that's not enough, so let's grab another EQ. How about this slate one? Let's find 8K again. I just instinctively want to push it more, but I'll back off again. Let's go 3 dB again. All right, and let's do one more. Now in fairness, on my original vocal SSL channel, I had some compression on there and some other EQ boosts lower down in the frequency range. So let's copy those over, but let's back off that 8K boost and just do a couple more. All right, so there we go. Instead of having one EQ doing a 9 dB boost, we've got three different EQs doing about 3 dB. So let's AB. Let's hear that new version first, and then I'll flip back to the original. We all knew these days will come. Can't seem to stop the rain. We all knew these days will come. Can't Don't really hear much difference. Let's try it in solo. We all knew these days will come Can't seem to stop the rain 
We all knew these days will come. Can't seem to stop the rain, ease the pain. I can barely tell any difference. So even if we get the same result this way, well, I've made it three times harder because I've done it over three steps instead of just one. And I've questioned in my mind instead of just turning a knob and cranking it until it sounds good. Plus with some of these plugins that have analog emulation, the more you push them, the more harmonics and saturation you're gonna get. So you're actually losing something sometimes by not pushing things far enough. Now don't let the word natural be an excuse for poor mixing. Unfortunately, I talked to a lot of people who are struggling with their mixes and they can't get it to sound competitive with other mainstream records. And instead of actually admitting that and going to get some real help for it, they just blame the whole rest of the music industry for being way too overprocessed. Bottom line, you have to learn to use your ears and you have to get good at silencing all the doubts and fears and ideas in your mind as you're mixing. Now, if you were an athlete, hesitations would, would kill you. Like imagine being a football player and every time you're about to make a play, you hesitate because you might get hurt or you might throw an interception. Well, if you're a mixer, you're kind of like a mental athlete and you're making hundreds of decisions during a mix, trying to make the right decision that's gonna serve the song best. But if you try to make those decisions based on some thought or idea that's running in your mind and you let those ideas take precedence over what you actually hear and your mix is not gonna be good. Period. And hey, part of the reason I'm sharing this is because I went through this exact same problem. I went through a phase where everything felt really complicated and I was constantly second guessing everything and I had all these opinions and theories and ideas going through my head and I was battling against them every time I mixed a song. And I'm telling you that I did not start to get close to pro mix quality until I got over that hurdle and started to be able to mix just based on my instinct from what I hear. So mix with your ears, not your fears. I had to say that again. If you wanna go deeper on this with things that really trip you up in your mind as you're mixing, I can give you some specific examples. There are some bad ideas out there about how to get a better, bigger, cleaner, low end. And I'm actually gonna argue that you should do the exact opposite of what a lot of those tips on YouTube say that you should do. So if you wanna see my controversial tips for a better low end, go ahead and click right here.